So along those think? lines, oh. let, let me let me now what I'm about to say, I have I have respect for LSU. So I'm not trying to sound like a hater when I say this. LSU's coming to this game as a favorite, three point favorite. Obviously, I believe that's because of the games in New Orleans. To me, from an outsider's perspective, this is an LSU team that came in six and seven. They're coming in off a six and seven season last year. New coach, a coach who, with all due respect, with a better Notre Dame team, I think Notre Dame was a better team than LSU last year, and beat Florida State by three points in overtime. Tell me why, and and I say this with all due respect, why we should be afraid of LSU, of this LSU team. Um, well, you know, it is a three points spread, right? You shouldn't be afraid of anything. I think, honestly, you know, I've watched a good bit of Florida State. I watched a Duquesne game. I watched uh, the Notre Dame games, uh, you know, just throughout this week, putting together, you know, content for the channel. Um, there's a lot of players I like on Florida State, a lot of players that grow on me. And, you know, I, I'm a harsh critic of who who, you know, guys that really stood out to me. And, Zero, 91, 15, and 10. Those are the guys that stood out to me on defense. The issue, though, is there are some defensive linemen for LSU that can take over football games, right? Uh, zero for you guys is great. Zero for LSU is a guy you got to watch out for, Mason Smith. And Jaqueline Roy, number 99, it's, it's just they're incredible defensive tackles. And that's where a lot of the trouble is going to come from for Florida State, right up there. And, I, I mean, look. Norvell's known for his running backs. We'll see if he can run the football on that front. I think Florida State's going to try and run a lot of counter. I think they're going to try and pull a bunch of guys and take advantage sometimes of LSU's aggressive defensive line. It's going to be interesting to see how LSU counters the counter, right? But that's who you have to fear right there, right up the middle, zero and 91. And truth be told, on the other side of the football, Kayshawn is incredible. Number seven, we, I mean, you can't short sell what this guy's accomplished when he's been healthy. He's been, and when you think about all the great LSU wide receivers, when he's been healthy, he's been as productive as all of them. I mean, his production rate is just absolutely insane. And he has the ankle injury. He now wears this number seven uniform that all the legends have worn. And this is big for him, right? He's been hearing that Jackson Smith and Jigba's the best receiver. Jordan Addison's the best receiver. Quentin Johnson's the best receiver. Um, but Kayshawn wants to come out and show that he's been one of the best. And I think, to me, the biggest surprise that a lot of Florida State fans might have is how good all the other receivers are for LSU, right? Kayshawn gets so much of, of the credit, but Jack Besh, number 80, BTJ, number 11, Brian Thomas Jr., and number eight, Malik Neighbors, they're all rising sophomores. So you look historically, most college football receivers get into the prime of their careers. You normally see who they are when it's year two. And all these guys played a lot of year in year one, and in year two, they're probably better than what they were last year. And now they're the guys. They are the bona fide backup guys. So they are looking to take that next step, and obviously a lot of it's going to come down to – Quarterback efficiency. Can Jaden throw? Um, and will he have time to throw? So, you know, as far as fearing, uh, to, to, to use your words, the guys you should fear, just keep it simple. I'm a numbers guy. Number zero, number 99 on defense. And then on offense, 87 and number eight and number 11 at wide receiver. Mm -hmm. I think we're all, we're all ready for New Orleans. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm ready. Logan's mm -hmm. going to be out there Friday. I'm going to be out there Saturday. I'm... Dang, y'all are all going. I yeah. like that. I've got, I, got my, I got my New Orleans mix on my phone ready as soon as I get off the airplane from Miami. I got, <laughs> I got, I got, I got a little <laughs> four boys, a little big timers. We're going up. We're going to Yeah, so. that's good, man. That's mm -hmm. great. Um, yeah, I'm doing a pregame show down there. So if you guys want to link up, just feel free to shoot me a message at Power Hour LSU. And I. Can't wait, man. I really, I, I'm not gonna lie. I really had a lot of fun studying Adam Fuller. I think he's very, very, very interesting as a defensive play caller, and uh, interesting to see what Atkins and uh, uh, Norvell have schemed up. Now, how's the offensive line? Are y'all healthy? Y'all gonna be ready to go? Oh, I, I think days. only you and my, I think only you and my nine-year-old son are the only two people who just truly love Adam Fuller. Who he, just, he's good. Just, who have said I. He, I have said he's the like he's the most surprising guy that we've had. Our defense has been 
not bad. Um, yeah, our man, offense man. has not taken off like it should, but you know, I get it. I'll trade. Yeah. I'll, I'll trade him to you for a plate of fried shrimp at this rate. So, nah. why why are you out? Look, look. Okay, l- l- let me say let me say this right. This outsider view of watching. 15, I don't remember the kid from UCF is a good player. Y'all's linebackers were too slow at times last year. Um, yeah, y'all, y'all had stuff, y'all had trouble, you know, stopping mobile quarterbacks as well. I watch, you know, some of, you know, all this different Florida State content, X's and O's and all these different things. And I was like, okay, let me go check this for myself. And I was like, well, a lot of the stuff Fuller's doing is, is fine. My, my biggest thing, though, is like, in, in terms of defense, I'm not in love with playing a four man front, but you could still do it. You could still do it in the modern era. You just got to, uh, the, the tough thing, and this is what LSU is going to do. They're going to uh, attack the edges. And what I think Florida State will do defensively, and Brian Kelly brought this up in the press conference as well, they're going to play a lot of quarters. They're going to be like, look, we're not going to let Kayshawn beat us over the top. So, you know, it's going to come down to LSU saying, look, can we, throw consistent balls to the outside, these seven yard outs, eight yards out, eight yard comeback routes. I think Fuller's going to make them work for it. And if he does it, I think that will make this a, a close game. So I, right now I have LSU edging Florida state, but you know, I, I, as of right now, it could, it could go either way. That's, that's the beauty of it, baby. Sunday night in the mm-hmm. top. Let's go. So Carter making a prediction, go with LSU in a close win over Florida State. Imagine that. I think I think the matchup that I'm looking forward to the most, and I'm projecting this, it's going to be Butte and it's going to be Renardo Green. I know everybody's talking about Amari, Marion Cooper a lot, and he wasn't available week uh, week zero against Duquesne. Um, I expected him to be a full go on Saturday, but Renardo Green has had a really nice the latter half of fall camp and. Last week of practice and this week alone, we haven't been able to go see tomorrow's practice yet. The schedule changed. Usually it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Carter, that we get to see him. And Renardo oh, okay. has looked good. I think it's going to be uh, number eight uh, on Butte on Sunday night. And I think FSU fans are hoping for the best there because you've got some talented wide receivers. The biggest factor for Florida State, though, is the D-line versus offensive line there. Like you said, those guys are going to have to – Build some chemistry pretty quickly there for the first time ever. And it's not going to be an, an easy group to go against. Um, I, I think that's going to be probably your biggest two matchups. And it's going to happen play by play on LSU on offense and FSU on defense. I think that's going to be the factor there, in my opinion, out of all of this. Logan, make a pick. Carter manned up and made a pick. It's your turn. No, I'm not making one. Uh, I got to wait till the show tonight. I got to wait. Oh. No, I don't know. He doesn't have to get a pick. He doesn't. Wow. He doesn't have to. He. he, he that's I gotta, a, I, and, and and I wish I wish we had the uh, practice today because there's availability. And I was just about to say. Yeah. LSU's had a really healthy camp for the most part. I know some guys weren't dressed last week, but it seems like they're good to go. FSU kind of on the other side, you know, with Gainer being out. But you know, Florida State's had a pretty up and down camp with with injuries. Um, LSU is bringing in a pretty healthy squad, correct? Yeah, they're they're looking for the most part pretty healthy, and they 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 were very 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 conservative as far as well. This guy might not be fully ready to go to, for practice, so we don't want him uh, to 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 go out there. And and one little thing uh, here at the end is LSU, even though they were as bad as they were, the one thing where they were exceptional was special teams, right? They had arguably the best field goal kicker in college football. He's kicking 60 yarders for the Browns now in, in preseason. Um, their kickoff specialist is no longer there, and he had one of the highest touchback percentages of any kickoff specialist in, in college football over the last four years. So, uh, And they have a new punter. Uh, the Notre Dame punter transfers over to Baton Rouge, and um, it's, 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 it's very interesting. It's going to be a brand-new special teams unit for LSU as well. James, you don't have a Discord. Can you make a pick? Come on, man. I do I have a Discord. Discord. I have the yeah. original he Discord. He has the OG Discord. Like, am, I the know? Only one? am I the only one without a Discord? Uh, yes. Every week you say this, yes. Yes. Like, it's like my Discord is literally the blueprint for everybody's Discords or message boards now. Um, it's fifth quarter, college football. But um, I think Florida State's going to win 27 to 24. But um, – I just I have one more question because I'm very I was having discussions about was it Mason Smith right? 
Ooh, yeah, yeah. I do believe it's good. Um, so was it practice like like the spring practice that you guys have got a chance to see and see and then the fall camp? Because without again, or is there like I just want to know a couple because I actually want to watch them. I like good D line play. And yeah. when I looked at I just went and looked at the stats and I was looking at it, I was like, all right, this guy, I'm not watching McNeese State. I'm not gonna watch that. That's where he had three sacks, and I'll probably go watch the Florida game. Is there any other game that I can go watch of him to be able to see the dominance? Because Josh Pate sets, I think is that his name, Josh Pate, the two four seven guy. Yeah, um, yeah said yeah. something that was incredible. Like he said, he's unblock. He's gonna be unblockable. And when I hear terms like that, I expect to go see unblockable stats, and I don't want to discount him. And I do know he's talented, um, especially this framework. Guys don't get built like that every day. So I'm just trying to find out so I can watch because this is um because I am intrigued to want to know more about what this LSU team does. Yeah. So last year, because of injuries, they asked him to play some defensive end. Um, so he, he's a guy that could play all four. He's a really freak athlete, right? UCLA game was really good. Like just the first game he's ever played, uh, they couldn't block him I and mean, just pressure right up the middle. And I think this actually happened some, and, and uh, you know, zero and ninety-one Cooper and um, who, what's the other one? Uh, number zero, number ninety-one Cooper. Oh, we got Cooper and Love it. Love it, Cooper and Love it. Okay, and they so th- this happens a lot now because quarterbacks are so good at like getting rid of the football. Where if you get pressure right up the middle, you see them right up the middle, and that affects your stats, right? Mm-hmm. So Cooper and Love it, I thought dominated versus Duquesne. But they only had one combined tackle. So I think that happened a lot to Mason Smith as well. Like his numbers don't look just absolutely incredible. But yeah, and and look, I I listened to that segment from from Pate. I had a few people send it to me. And Mason Smith is just really good. Like he just makes a lot of stuff happen. But I will also include that the better pass rusher out of the two is 99, Jaqueline Roy. He's on a couple of first round boards. And look, this is. They got a brand new defensive line coach. This is Roy's third defensive line coach in three years. And the defense is going to be new. This is my biggest takeaway from this week was, um, and and it it might've been you, Logan. I saw a Florida state reporter tweet this out. Um, It might've been the reporter from two, four, seven, that they haven't seen Matt house's defense since 2018. Nobody really knows what Matt house is actually going to do on defense and what makes it very interesting is even in the practice clips that they release to the public, um, they, they didn't really do a whole lot of exotic things defensively. They really didn't. So I think you could see a lot of different stuff thrown Florida State's way. And that would be, for Florida State, a big cause for concern. And also look out for number 10, Harold Perkins. This guy is unbelievable. This is one of the best high school football recruits I've ever seen. And I felt that way even when he committed to Texas A&M. He is truly incredible. All his high school highlights are him at running back, and I was playing linebacker. He has some linebacker highlights. He is truly, truly insane. And no one really knows how he's going to be used. Are they going to blitz him? Are they going to drop him in coverage? What are they going to do? So it should be a, a fun debut for both of them. Okay. My uh, prediction is going to be Jason on Patreon, which is connected to the Discord. So, huh? 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 Carter, if you didn't guess, uh, Jason, just the, the, the word Discord. Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. There's yeah. I don't understand um, it. I don't understand disgusting. the hatred, but it's smart, though. Discord is very smart. I work, I work for an actual TV station, so I don't have a Discord, so I'll give you my prediction right now. I know. I, I get it. I understand. I think it's going to be a great game. I wish this was the LSU Florida State game from 30 plus years ago when, when they were two of the better teams, or even five or six years ago when they were two of the better teams in college football. Uh, I've made a lot of stupid picks in the last couple of years. This one may come back to bite me, but I'll do it. Florida State 24, <laughs> LSU 20. Oh, okay. I, I like one thing, Mark, before I get it, everyone's predictions, okay? Even neutral national guys that I've seen. Mm-hmm. Both scores in the 20s. Everyone thinks it's kind of in that 20, 20 ish. And it's weird because I think everybody feels the same way about both sides of the football, whether you're a fan of one or the other, whether you're just a neutral observer. 
nobody's totally in love with either side's offense. Nobody is totally in love with either side's defense, but neither side thinks that the other is that bad. And that's why you're getting a lot of these scores in the twenties. Uh, it's, it's, it's very interesting, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's great. But maybe the most important question to ask and answer for the hour, Carter is somebody told me today that Keishan Butte is now Keishan booty, 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 rocking everywhere. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's interesting, right? He's, it was Butte. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's booty. He says it's, it's, it's booty. I, I, don't ask me why. It's, Wait a minute. He changed his name or he's telling no, us no, no. to announce it booty? No, it's, I, I guess it's always just been booty, but you know, people it's just cool. started. Yeah. It's and then people booty. just started, people yeah. just started doing booty and it's spelled, it's still spelled the same B O U T E. He's working the NIL angle. Is right. He's working <laughs> toward. Yeah. I think we're, all, we're, all, we're also glossing over the fact that Carter just made a Bubba Sparks reference by singing that song. I just want to throw that there out. you go. Oh, I, that man. better be. <laughs> I just want to point that out for one moment that we should gloss over the fact that Carter <laughs> just <laughs> Bubba Sparks on this. Okay. <laughs> well, that's awesome. 